Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on the topic human reproduction and this video is presented to you by www.examhe.com. So as in our previous video we have discussed about the male reproductive system and various parts of male reproductive system which include testes and the accessory ducts present in the male reproductive system. So in testes we have discussed about the different parts of testes. Now we are going to discuss the cells present in testes. Okay. So testes also contain some hormone secreting cell which is called interstitial cells of Leydig. So as you can see in this diagram the Leydig cell were present which secretes the male hormone which is called testosterone. And the part of testes which is actually responsible for the formation of sperm cell is called seminiferous tubule. The testes have various compartments of seminiferous tubules in which the sperm cells are produced. So seminiferous tubules consist of two types of cells which is the spermatogenic cell and the supporting cell which is called the cells of Sertoli. So what are the basic role of spermatogenic cell and cells of Sertoli? So the spermatogenic cells basically produces the sperm cells and cells of Sertoli nourishes the sperm cell. So that's why cells of Sertoli is also called uh, nurse cell. Okay. So in children the testes is not fully developed so only primitive germ cell spermatogonia are present. So in children only spermatogonia are present but with the onset of puberty at the time of maturity the spermatogenic cell uh, will undergo differentiation in order first spermatogonium then primary spermatocyte then secondary spermatocyte and then spermatide. Spermatide is actual sperm cell. So this order we are going to discuss later. So uh, what we have to remember that onset of the puberty the spermatogenic cell undergo differentiation and uh, converted into the uh, sperm cell. Okay. Now cells of Sertoli. As you can see in this diagram these are the Sertoli cells and these one are the spermatogenic cell. Okay. So these are spermatogenic cell and these are Sertoli cell. So Sertoli cells support and nourish the sperm, secretes the hormones like estrogen and enzyme which are necessary for the development of sperm for spermatogonia. So for the development of sperm from spermatogonia the cells of Sertoli secrete some hormone like estrogen and some of the enzyme which is necessary for the differentiation of spermatogonia into sperm. So that's why Sertoli cell is also called nurse cell. Okay. So now we are going to discuss on seminal vesicle. So what is seminal vesicle? So as we have discussed previously that the male reproductive system contain testes and some accessory ducts. So these accessory duct uh, add the semen to the sperm to provide motility to the sperm. So sperm is formed inside the testes and the semen is formed by the constituents of this uh, accessory ducts. Okay. So one of the duct is seminal vesicle. So as you can see in this diagram this one is the seminal vesicle which adds 60 percent of its constituent into the semen and as you can see this is testes which produces the sperm the sperm passes through the vas difference this is the vas difference as you can see this is the vas difference which enters or join with the uh, duct seminal vesicle and other duct at some points which add the uh, viscous liquid to the sperm and which provides the motility to the sperm. So the secretion from the seminal vesicle is viscous it is neutral and slightly alkaline at 60% of the semen. So the secretion contain the seminal vesicle contains the secretion which has these constituents fructose, phosphorylcholine, fibrinogen 
ascorbic acid, citric acid, pepsinogen and prostaglandin. So now we are going to discuss about fructose, fibrinogen and prostaglandin. So fructose is a kind of uh, molecule similar to the glucose which is utilized by the sperm cell and is the main source of energy of a sperm cell. See every cell need uh, energy molecule so that uh, they can perform their work so that they can perform their action so the sperm cell also need the source of energy which is fructose provided by seminal vesicle. Fibrinogen converts the coagulum by clotting enzyme in prostatic secretion causes conversion of fibri fibrinogen as soon as the semen is ejaculated. So this point we are going to discuss in the prostate gland. Okay. Next is prostaglandin. Prostaglandin increases the rate of transport of sperm in female genital tract and involves suppressing an immune response by the female against the foreign semen. So the female uh, will uh, generate some uh, immune response against the uh, foreign semen. So the prostaglandin will suppress the immune response of the female against the semen and also increases the rate of transport of sperm cell okay and now the next topic is prostate gland prostate gland is also an accessory duct uh, which add its constituent to the semen and it adds 30% uh, of the total semen seminal vesicle add 60% of the total semen and prostaglandin add 10 30% uh, of the total semen and 10% is sperm present in the semen okay so you can see in this diagram this is the prostate gland and you can see that it is also joined by the uh, seminal vesicle at a point and also the vast difference so that the semen can add to the sperm cell okay so the secretion from the prostate gland is thin milky and alkaline fluid the secretion consists of so the constituent of the secretion released from the prostate gland is sodium calcium zinc citrate cholesterol phospholipid, acid phosphatase, spermin, fibrinolysin and clotting enzyme. So the prostate fluid provide the optimum pH for the motility of the sperm. So the fluid released from the vas deferens and the vaginal secretion in the female is highly acidic with the pH of 3.5 and 4. So at this pH 3.5 to 4 the sperm will be non-motile. For the motility of the sperm, the pH should be above 6, not less than 6. If the pH is less than 6, then the sperm will be non-motile. So, the prostaglandin releases the alkaline fluid which neutralizes the acidity and maintains the pH of 6 to 6.5. So, at this pH, the sperm will become motile okay the next point is the clotting enzyme in the prostatic secretion cause conversion of fibrinogen from the seminal vesicle into coagulum it is essential for holding the sperm in the uterine cervix so as we have discussed previously in seminal vesicle about the fibrinogen so as I have told that I will discuss that point in prostate gland so here's the point the prostate uh, gland secrete uh, the clotting enzyme which will convert the fibrino fibrinogen fibrinogen into the coagulum coagulum okay coagulum and uh, so this occur in the presence of clotting enzymes Okay, so in the presence of clotting enzyme, 
fibrinogen is converted into the coagulum then uh, the coagulum is dissolved by the fibrinolysin which is also secreted by the prostate gland and this coagulum is dissolved by the fibrinolysin so only the fibrinogen is released from the uh, seminal vesicle which is converted into the coagulum in the presence of clotting enzyme and coagulum is again uh, dissolved by the fibrinolysin so that the sperm will become motile so why this process occur so inside the female uh, re reproductive system now we will see this is the uterus this is the uterus and this is the cervic region this is cervic and this is the vaginal region okay this is vaginal so when the semen enter into the vagina so it should be hold inside the cervix region that means in this region so in this region the fibrino uh, fibrinogen is converted into coagulum so that the sperm can be hold in the into the uterine cervix and after that when the fibrinolysin dissolve the coagulum the sperm is again become motile and can be enter into the uterus so that's why this whole process occur okay so the next topic is bulbo urethral gland or cooper's gland so it secrete the transparent alkaline uh, viscous fluid the fluid neutralizes the acid protect the sperm from abrasion against the vaginal wall after ejection so here you can see in this diagram the bulbo urethral gland is present which join the urethra and add small amount of uh, uh, liquid or spot uh, small amount of its secretion into the semen and the role is to neutralize the acid and product uh, protect the sperm from abrasion against the vaginal wall after ejection okay the next one is urethra so urethra is also a part of male reproductive system and the urethra have the common opening from for the urine and the secretion of male reproductive organ which is semen so as you can see in this diagram this is the urinary bladder this is the urinary bladder and urinary bladder have the opening which is called urethra through which the urine is passed from the urinary bladder and ejac ejaculated out of the body and this one is the testes having a pipe which is called vas deferens which carries a sperm also join the urethra at this point and uh, at this point the sperm is also released from the urethra having the common opening so the male urethra is much longer than the female urethra and uh, urethra has three part the first is called prostatic urethra because it is surrounded by the prostate gland which is present here okay so this one is prostatic urethra prostatic urethra carries urine only the second is membranous urethra from here to here it is membranous urethra which carry both urine and sperm the third one is the pineal urethra from here to this is the pineal urethra because it is surrounded by the region called penis and it also carries both urine and sperm okay next is semen so semen is a whitish fluid which contain the spermatozoa and the mixture of secretion released from the seminal vesicle prostate gland and cooper's gland as we have discussed earlier that the semen is formed from the combination of the constituent released from the seminal vesicle prostate gland and cooper's gland each drop of semen contain this much of sperm from which only one can fertilize the ovum and other were degraded okay the semen provide the suitable medium for the swimming of the sperm this we have discussed earlier 
It contains polypeptide, phosphorylcholine, inositol, citric acid, fructose and an important enzyme, hyaluronidase. This hyaluronidase enzyme is important for the lysis of the wall of egg so that the sperm can enter easily into the egg cell. Organic ions such as sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chlorine, PO4 and the presence of zinc is highest. Fructose in the semen is a source of energy which helps the sperm for motility. This we have discussed earlier and the composition of semen is the sperm released from the testes is 10%, the fluid uh, from the secretion from seminal vesicle 60%, the secretion from prostate gland is 30% and this forms the 100% semen. The small amount of secretion is released from bulbourethral gland so it can be cannot be uh, uh, considered in the percentage of the composition of semen because the secretion is very small. Now the next one is the sperm. A sperm has the three part the head mid piece and the tail part okay the total count of a sperm is about 100 to 115 million per ml of semen that means 1 ml of semen should contain 100 to 115 million of sperm if there is a count which is less than 20 million per ml if the sperm count is less than 20 million per ml of a semen then it can cause the male sterility. Male sterility is the condition in which the male is not able to uh, give birth, ab not able to produce that much of a sperm that could fertilize with the ovum and produces the zygote. After ejaculation, a sperm survive about 24 to 48 hours at the body temperature. Okay. And in female genital tract, a sperm reaches into the fallopian tube in about 30 to 60 minutes after intercourse. So the fallopian tube is the area where the egg is uh, present stationary so that the sperm can, uh, can come and uh, fuse with it, uh, with it and form the zygote. So this process occurs in about 30 to 60 minutes after the intercourse. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe exam hai on YouTube, like our videos and please comment.